as you know, the Fed yesterday, as you probably know, the Fed yesterday increased its uh, key interest uh, rate by uh, 25 basis points, a quarter of a percent. Uh, this was what the markets uh, anticipated, although just two weeks ago, the consensus was that the Fed would increase by 50 percent uh, in order to fight inflation with the idea that it, the inflation numbers were still high and that interest rates need to go even higher. The economy slowed down even more so that uh, inflation pressures would be mitigated. So in the battle with inflation, uh, I, I, the consensus was at least two plus weeks ago that the Fed would increase by fifty percent, by fifty basis points. Uh, as a consequence of the the banking crisis and and the problems with banks, some were speculating that the that the uh, Fed might not increase interest rates at all, and by doing so, uh, try to help the banks. Uh, at this point, uh, banks are hurt with interest rates rising because that uh, hurts their investment portfolio. Uh, but the Fed, uh, so the Fed, the Fed decided to uh, what is it? Split the baby, to go half half and and take the fifty basis points and the zero. Those are the two targets and and go twenty five basis points right in the middle. Market seems to have liked it. The Nasdaq S and P are all up today, um, but uh, banks don't like it. Bank stocks are, are, are being pounded again today and are down today quite a bit. Again, so uh, uh, a split in the market, uh, although. You know, again, if you understand the, the economics and how these things are connected, there's no way in which, there's no world in which uh, banks doing really, really badly is good for the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. So this divergence is a little questionable, but, but clearly money is flowing out of investments in banks and into investments in pretty much anything else. Uh, and that is, uh, that is driving markets right now. Did the Fed do the right thing? As I've told you many, many, many times, there's no right answer to that. The, I, I don't know, uh, you know, this kind of central planning is ultimately, it's impossible to do the right thing. You can do more damage, less damage. Uh, it, 25 basis points, you know, seems to be, uh, they guess at less damage. If they'd gone to zero, uh, the markets would have accused them of not taking inflation seriously. If they'd gone to uh, 50 basis points, uh, th that would have been uh, viewed as them not caring at all about the situation of banks. They did indicate yesterday that uh, it looks like uh, they won't have to raise interest rates much more. They believe at this point that inflation is under control. We will see if that is true or not. Uh, and uh, that maybe another 25 basis points increase, but that might be it for the year. This is again a, a major change from what, they were, what, they, what the Fed was saying just about a month ago when they were expecting significantly more increases and they expected inflation was a lot more stubborn uh, than what they thought it was going to be. So things change and things change very quickly as data comes in uh, from the world out there and as the implications for the route in, in banking um, uh, to the, to, in a sense, to the, to the real economy uh, once those are factored in. So. Uh, the Fed is doing what the Fed does. It's, it's trying to use its whatever mathematical models to make the best estimate that it can and do the least damage possible. Of course, uh, the, 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 the cause of the entire banking crisis and the cause of inflation is uh, the Feds and, and, and uh, the Trump and Biden administration. The, the, it's a response to COVID. It's the, uh, it's the massive influx of money uh, massive increase in government debt. It's, uh, to, to some extent, the monetization of that debt, if you will, by the Federal Reserve, by, by buying all those bonds and facilitating massive liquidity during the financial crisis. These are the causes of inflation, the causes of the, of the banking crisis. So uh, the root cause of everything going on uh, wrong in markets right now and in in, um, in, in your cost of living right now and the fact that, you know, it's much more expensive to live in America today uh, and in the world, really, all of that is, is caused by government. And we should never forget that. Uh, what the Fed is trying to do is undo the damage it has already done. The federal government doesn't seem to eager at all to undo the, the damage it's doing. No move, whether by Democrats or Republicans, is being taken to reduce the deficit, to reduce government spending, to... Uh, to signal a seriousness about uh, deficit control, nothing. So 
I, I, what I want to emphasize, two things I always want to emphasize when talking about the Fed. One, nothing they do is, is, is right. It's just a question of how wrong are they. And second is uh, the, the crises that we're facing, the problems that we're facing, the challenges we're facing from an economic perspective are the result of government action. Uh, and, and the tragedy is, of course, that nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to act on it. Uh, nobody seems to derive any conclusions from this about the role of government in our economy and what the role of the government should be. Uh, if anything, the calls are for more regulations, more controls, more government intervention. So if we're talking about the uh, government causing problems, uh, I think, again, it is really, really important that we, we, we look at the current banking crisis and uh, uh, try to identify at least some of the causes for it. And again, I think you will find that many of these causes, or all the causes, are, are basically government. Now, we talked about the fact that government, because of deficit spending and printing of money, caused the inflation, which caused the interest rates to rise, which has caused the investment portfolios of banks to decline, and therefore the value of the assets to decline, and the liquidity to decline. And, they, and, and that is basically a, a major source of the bank runs and a major source of the problems within banking. But that was well known uh, before the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Um, and, um, and that, in and of itself, does not explain what happened. And it certainly doesn't explain what happened to, uh, uh, for example, to Signature Bank in New York. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.